Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this unboxing, walkthrough, first impressions, side-by-side -side comparison of the Brady Tarot, the new second edition. So I am going to be showing you this deck and also comparing it to my first edition. I'm really excited. I just got it in the mail today. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with the Brady Tarot, it first came out in this version. This was the first edition of the deck. Um, and it came in this really nice like slide magnetic box. Um, it has just a little magnet right here on the lid. So I'm going to take you into the first edition briefly and then we're going to open up the second edition and take a look at it together. So one of the things that I really loved about the Brady Tarot is that the guidebook is written by Rachel Pollock and she does just an absolutely amazing job of taking you through the cards and tying them into the meaning of the writer Waite Smith. Um, and, and really talking about what is being depicted in the card and how it relates to the meaning of the card. You get a lot of information about the animals that are represented, so I really feel like I learn a lot from this deck as well. And the guidebook is just really beautifully produced. Look at that. So the Brady Tarot itself was made using a lino cut method, um, if I'm remembering correctly, which means that each image was engraved into um, a material and then paper was put over top of that material, something about ink, and it picks up the image, and then they were individually, I think, painted or colored um, by Emmy Brady, the creator of the deck. So this is a very labor-intensive deck, and the quality is really, really lovely. So the first edition is a standard size tarot. It's got a beautiful matte gold gilding on it and a rose petal finish, uh, and we'll be going through all the artwork shortly, but just to give you an idea of what to expect. So that is my first edition. The inside of the box was actually padded. The only issue I've personally had, and I, I've actually been just keeping it on a shelf, um, is that I've got a split down the bottom of the box. And I don't know if it came that way. It does look like it was maybe two pieces of wood here and not one. But I don't know if it's just the humidity in the air or what, but it feels like there's just a little bit of a gap there. That might just have been a flaw on my box. I don't know. It's, it still feels sturdy and everything it's been it's been fine so that is the first edition and how it came so when Emmy announced the second edition I was really tempted and one of the main reasons I was tempted is because she was making a change to how the artwork was going to be how the cards were going to be basically framed um, so I believe they're gonna have a black border and the image is gonna be bigger I think the card itself is gonna be bigger so let's take a look everything is still packaged so let's see what we've got so this I'm assuming is the deck and it did come with a little bag so this is really cute. She's had this obviously screen printed somehow. This is a basic sort of single layer, um, kind of thin bag. You guys know I'm a fabric snob, um, but this is fine, right? I like that it's not one of those um, kind of velvety bags. This would be fine to put your cards in. I feel like it would definitely fit the cards themselves, but this is just the first edition as an example. Um, we'll see how it will fit the second edition because I do think it's a little bigger. But this is a nice little, I think this was a stretch goal. So that's nice that that was included. Let's not light it on fire, Lisa. Okay, there we go. And then this also came, and I think this was another stretch goal. As you can see, I haven't even opened it yet, but I think this might be prints or a print. Maybe you got to select a print. My memory is terrible. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, it's got my name on there. Oh, is this something about a possum? Is that what I did? Oh, look. Oh, I love this. Oh, there's a little note in here. Is that it? I feel like there was something else in there. No, that's it. Okay, so let me set this aside. Yeah, you must have been able to select. I think I remember this from the survey. Look, and I selected the possum. Isn't he the sweetest? So this is number 10 of 66. She signed it. Okay, I really want to kind of, I guess... I don't know what I want to do with this. I definitely want to frame it or um, maybe color it or just frame it. I don't know. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. And then this is probably just my paperwork. Yeah, it's got my like address and stuff on it. But it's still nice that she, you know, wrote on it and then she stamped it with um, the High Priestess stamp, which I just love. That is beautiful. Okay, so let's set that there too. Okay, it's time. Let's see. So as far as I know, the card quality was going to be the same, the finish on the cards was going to be the same, but it now has obviously a smaller box. She packed this so, so thoughtfully. So we had a little bit of paper, set the packing materials aside, and then some bubbles. 
Ooh. Okay, oh, look at that. Oh, look what she's done. Oh, nice. So she um, removed the plastic enough to um, sign the boxes. I love that for two reasons. One, I don't have to use a knife to try to open this now. Yay! Um, and two, it's signed. And I don't remember her saying she was gonna do that, so that's a nice touch. Oh my God, this box feels so good. <laughs> okay. So I did have it in my head just for full disclosure that there was a chance that if I fell in love with the second edition I was going to be rehoming my first edition. So I don't know if I'm going to reach that verdict during this video or not. We will see. Um, I need to get this like outer sleeve off and I don't want to rip anything. Okay. There may have been a better way to... Do ah, look at that. There we go. Oh my god, this is so pretty. So it has just this wraparound. Um, inspired by the animals and plants of North America. A portion of the proceeds, so this is something I didn't talk about, and this is true of the first edition as well. A portion of the proceeds are donated to North America environmental and indigenous North um, nonprofits. Um, and then there's a quote here from Rachel Pollock on the back. It's just very thoughtful um, packaging for sure. And this box is so stunning. Look at the spot gloss creating the Brady Tarot with the High Priestess here. That is so beautiful and classy looking. A journey through the wilderness of spirit, it says here in spot gloss. And this is so nice. You don't have all the like UPC and all the other stuff on the outside, and it's a slide top box. And then here you have the vessels for cups, the feathers for wands, the roots for the pentacles, and the arrows for the swords on the box, which you also had in the original. Um, she had the symbols vessels, feathers roots, oh sorry, knocking the camera, and arrows um, engraved on the box. Really beautifully done. So here we go, okay. And I don't think there's any more plastic. It doesn't look like there is. Oh, this is really exciting. Sorry. I'm such a nerd, but I just can't help it. This is such a beautiful presentation, though. I'm really loving this. Okay, so here's what our backings look like. Let's do a little comparison real quick, and then we'll look at the book. Actually, let's look at the book at the end. So you can see they look so much nicer without the white, I think, on the outside. And I was worried they were going to feel massive, but they actually don't feel massive. These feel like a nice size. I thought they were going to feel too big. But really, let's just take a look at the size difference here. Um, get it lined up. So it's not that much. You can see from the outside of the white. It's just a little bit wider and a little bit taller. Um, oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the gilding. So it is a di there's a difference in the gilding. So the original had a smooth um, matte gold gilding. This one has a little bit of that. Um, it's still kind of a matte gold, but it's got a little sparkle to it almost. I don't know if that shows up on camera very well. Finish wise and cardstock wise, they do feel identical. They both have that really nice soft matte finish. So I've put this deck in order of. I think wands, swords, cups, pentacles. So if this is in a different order, we'll have to switch things around as we go. But I am going to zoom us in. Actually, maybe I won't do a side by side because I think we're going to get the idea. But I'm going to do a couple cards just to give you so you can really see the difference in the size and such. So let me zoom you in a bit here. And let's just see. Yeah. Oh, I love this. And the other thing that um, Emmy did is she put the the borders on the deck, so let me show you on this one here. Let's zoom. I'm going to zoom this back out. Sorry, guys. Can't make up my mind what I'm doing. So the borders um, let you know what the element is. So you have for the arrows, which is the air element. So air element has this sort of wooden uh, frame around it. Water has the blue. Fire has, is that fire or earth now? I always forget which is which. Okay, yeah, earth is the, oh, I've put these in a weird order. Earth is the um, orange color. Red is the fire color. Fire is the red color, rather. And there's another frame for one of the other elements here. Did I get them all? Oh yeah, no, blue, red, frame, and orange. Yeah, sorry, I know that didn't make a lot of sense. Okay, I'm going to put my first edition away. We're going to just focus on the second edition. And I think I'm just going to zoom us in part, part way so I can hold the cards. And I'll take you all the way through all the images. So the Fool, the Magician, the Priestess. Oh, that wasn't the Priestess in the, um, on the box. 
the Empress. I love the fox in the front here. The Emperor. The Hierophant. This deck I find to be such a good deck. It, it's an animal based deck but every choice makes sense and it's explained so beautifully in the guidebook. The Chariot. Strength. And there's nothing, ah there we go, she's the Hermit. That's right, she's the Hermit. Um, there's nothing, it's not, it's not, it's not nice washed in any way, right? You get very um, balanced, a balanced look at nature and how it applies to the tarot. The Wheel of Fortune. Justice. I call this um, affectionately my National Geographic deck, but I do think I already am going to say that I'm going to be keeping the second edition and probably rehoming my first edition. Um, because really, to me, this is so much... I really like the, the bigger size and the lack of the white on the front. It just makes the images... I just feel like I get drawn into them so much better. The Devil. Tower. I guess I didn't need to put my first edition in order for the walkthrough, but since I'm not doing a side-by-side -side necessarily. The Star. The Moon. Sun. Oops. Judgment and the world. So in this deck, feathers are wands, or wands are feathers, I should say. Um, and there are keywords through the miners. I love the keywords in this deck. I find them really helpful. I find them to resonate with me for how I see the cards. So there's not a lot of disjointedness for me there. Inspiration for the ace. Success for the two. This I, I say there's no disjointedness, and there was actually initially for me with this card until I read about it. It's like the Wiley Coyote moment. Like he's caught the he's caught the Roadrunner, and there's a like now what? Okay, you've, you've done one thing. Now what's next? Kind of energy to this card. So it does make sense when you start to learn about it. Vantage for the three. Optimism for the four. Rivalry for the five. Victory for the six. Power for the seven. Swiftness for the eight. Oh, I feel for this little creature here, but that's how the eight of wands often feels. Like you're just like stark and you're caught out on the field, you're vulnerable, and then here comes all of this like overwhelming energy coming at you. Conflict for the nine. Hummingbirds are very territorial creatures. Burden for the ten. And then through the courts, we have daughter, son, mother, father. So we have daughter instead of page, son instead of knight, mother instead of queen, and father instead of king. Again, the colors just really work, taking you through the suit. Joy for the ace of cups. And we have vessels um, for the cup suit. Union for the two of cups. Celebration for the three. Apathy for the four, loss for the five, happiness for the six. I love river otters. They're one of my favorite um, animals. Breach for the seven. Departure for the eight. Fulfillment for the nine. And overflowing for the ten. Daughter, oh, horns, not vessels, my bad. I keep calling them vessels, but in my head that's what I've been calling them this whole time. Son of horns instead of the knight. Mother of horns instead of the queen. And father of horns instead of the king. Oh, I'm really loving the size. And I feel like this is going to be, I'm going to reach for this deck more in a way because I'm not going to have it in that big fancy box. <laughs> is that silly? But it's probably true. Um, so here we are in the swords, which are arrows. So we have truth for the ace, armistice for the two, mourning for the three, withdrawal for the four, defeat for the five. These are not always easy images to look at, but again, I, I call this my National Geographic deck. Like I know it's going to go right to um, truth. It doesn't sugarcoat messages at all. Guile. For the seven. Oppression for the eight. Anguish for the nine. 
and finality for the ten. That's a tough image too. The ten of swords often is, hey? So I love the sloth here as the page of swords. I think that's really cute. The son of arrows. So that's the knight. The mother of arrows instead of the queen. The father of arrows for the king. And here we are in the pentacles and we have enchantment for the ace. I'm sorry, pentacles in this deck are roots. So we have enchantment for the ace, equilibrium for the two, work for the three, preservation for the four, I love this, all curled up and safe, scarcity for the five, altruism for the six, Ooh. growth, is that growth? Yeah, sorry, I was looking at it through my viewfinder. For the seven, discipline for the eight, Accomplishment for the nine, wealth for the ten. Then we have the daughter of roots for the page, the son of roots for the knight, the mother of roots. I love this sort of queen. Is it a bee? I can't remember if it's a bee or an ant. It might be an ant. Um, yeah, that's an ant. So the queen is the ant, the, the, the queen ant, and the father of roots. One of the things that I really, like I said, found super enjoyable about this deck, I'm going to zoom this back out again, uh, one of the things I find super enjoyable about this deck is how much I learn about the natural world through working with this deck and the guidebook, um, or really sitting with the message of that animal and then like looking it up, learning more about it, understanding for myself how it plays in. These shuffle really beautifully. I just had to, I had to shuffle. Now that I've gone through them in order, I just had to shuffle. Yeah, these are really beautiful. So as with all rose petal finish decks, they do stick just a little bit. So there's a little bit of clumpiness that happens. Let's take a look at the guidebook and then we'll do a little card draw and check out card draw. So we have that gorgeous spot gloss with the hermit card on the front again. And this is the card image back. This feels really good. And where it's not spot gloss, it is rose petal finish. Um, so let's do a little comparison because I want to see if we're going to lose any context here. So the original guidebook was 100 and, oh, there's a spread in the back. I don't think I ever have used this. So it's basically it's 185 pages. Let's take a look at this one. It looks like this one is 185 pages. It literally looks, you guys, like it's probably going to be a shrunk down version of the exact same information. So let's take a look at Four of Horns Apathy and just see if it's the same entry, but I'm guessing. Okay, Four of Horns, because the font's kind of large in this deck, or sorry, in this version of the guidebook. So um, one, two, three, four paragraphs plus the intro, and it looks like it's the same. Intro, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so I'm guessing that the guidebook is the same, um, which was the one concern I had was this guidebook is so good that I was concerned the smaller format guidebook would either have an impossibly small font, and it's not impossibly small, um, the font's easy to read, so I don't think I'll have any trouble with that. Um, I think that's gonna be just fine. So yeah, I'm not gonna miss out on the guidebook at all. Okay, so let me, let's do a little shuffle and we'll do a draw and we'll read from the guidebook so you can get a feel for the deck. All right, let's do one pull. Altruism, the Six of Pentacles. I'll just zoom you in on that image while I read. Oops, while I read from the guidebook. So, Six of Roots. Altruism, selflessness, helping others with a willingness to change structure, structures that have some people dependent on others. Awareness that we, what we give to the world or simply the people around us may change reality in ways that benefit us as well or even awaken something within us. The picture shows a white-sided jackrabbit and a Mexican vine snake who holds a quetzal feather in his mouth. Most cards in the deck derive from the lives of plants and animals. The Six of Roots derives from a creation story. Quetzalcoatl, I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm going to show you actually in the guidebook the, the name. Quetzalcoatl, I'm probably not saying that right here decided to come to Earth in a human body. After several hot days when he could not find any water, he lay down under a full moon to die. Hare came across him and asked what was wrong. 
Canticotal said, there is no food or water here. I will surely die. Nonsense, Hare said. Just eat grass like me. There's enough for everyone. My human body can't eat grass. All I can do is die. Now, Hare could have said, serves you right for becoming human, and hopped away. <laughs> Instead, after consideration, he offered, you could eat me. I'll die, but you'll keep on living. Kiatokotl was so impressed, he changed into his true form, the feathered serpent, and leaped into the sky. He then said, I wish to honor you, Hare. From this moment on, you will live in the moon, and whenever it is full, your self selflessness will be remembered. Reading this wonderful story, it struck me that Kiatokotl lost his memory of his true self when he became human, and only the shock of Hare's altruism remind him of, reminded him of who he really was. And maybe we humans all share the same problem, amnesia of our true selves. So that's a really, really beautiful message. And again, just speaks to the depth that you'll find in this um, guidebook. It's just really, really well done. So yay, I'm very, very excited to have this deck. I think I'm going to be able to confidently let my first... Oh, what happened? We have some... Did I... What did I do? Oh, that's what I did. I was going to fan them out and one card was upside down. Anyways, what I was going to say is I think I'll be able to confidently let my first edition of this deck go now that I have this beautiful second edition. You can tell they don't fan quite as easily as as a glossier, less velvety cardstock would fan. I am super excited about this in case it wasn't obvious and I can't wait to read with it. I've got a Peggy bag that I actually was using for this deck when I would take it out of its um when I would take it out of its big wooden box and I think it may just hold the deck in its box. Oh, look at that you guys. Ah. So I'll be able to put the second edition in the Peggy bag and hang it on my wall which is great because it's, as if it's easier for me to get at then it's going to be a lot easier for me to reach for and I'm more likely to reach for it more often. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and coming with me on this little tour of the Brady Tarot 2nd Edition. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this deck down below. Did you back it? Do you plan to back it? What's the story? Hit me up. Do you like it? Um, I guess you can't back it because it's already done. I said that weird. Well, you could probably go on to BradyTarot.com and purchase yourself a copy. I have a feeling that those are going to be available to order very, very soon. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you would like to book a reading with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. See you later, guys. Bye.